So I did a little bit more this week than just watch clover grow in our pasture. This fire truck caught the lower insulation on fire. We lost about a quarter of our corn crop because of the wind. We're two hitchhikers. We met while hiking Mount Baldy with mutual friends, wasted no time, got engaged on a frozen alpine lake, got hitched, and have been adventuring together since. We're embarking on a new adventure of living big in a tiny home. Let's see how this goes. Adventure awaits. <laughs> Last week I picked up some straw, but I haven't been able to go through all of it yet. However, I need to go make a pickup, so I need to get this hay, excuse me, straw out of the back of this trailer. And we don't have a barn, so I'm not sure where to put it. I guess for now, this spot will have to do. Well, I'm here at a local nursery where they specialize in dirt, topsoil, grass seed, lawn mix, everything for the local area. So we have a little bit of an issue with getting good topsoil from our property. So instead of waiting for the compost to compost down and decompose, possibly not having enough, we're getting some topsoil here. And I picked up some of these guys. Anybody have an idea what these are? Yep, these are asparagus crowns. But before I get back to any projects, I need to bottle the beer. With all the bottles sanitized, I now have to siphon off all of the wort from the lees at the bottom of the bucket. Looks pretty gross, doesn't it? But don't worry, all of that goes into the compost. And how's the flavor? Well, it's pretty much what we expected from a light wheat beer. It's a little hoppier than anticipated, but I think it's gonna be refreshing. We'll have to wait and see until it's carbonated. Into the boxes you go. We're supposed to wait about two weeks before enjoying them, but I'm hoping that will coincide right around the time that Ruben gets back. Speaking of, he sent an update. So, driving through the fire, this fire truck caught the lower insulation on fire. And what it did is it caught the bottom interior of the ABS module and the wiring harness underneath. So this is gonna need a new body harness and that's dealer only. I'm not gonna be doing that here. That's just ridiculous. Hopefully you can see all this here. Now what I've been doing is I've been playing around with the layout because we only have two of these large format tiles left and we have a few options for these pebbles. Now this is the restroom floor remnant and this is the shower floor remnant, but we're repurposing it here and it just, you know, ties the whole house together. Uh, 
I was initially thinking of having these two tiles in the center and then the pebbles around it. Ruben suggested this method. I played with both and this one definitely works better. Mainly, well, because it lines up perfectly here with the separation of this large side and the small side, but also with the ash that comes out of this cubic mini wood stove, it's just easier to clean here with less grout lines than it would over here on this side. So I think I'm happy with this. I have some small sectional pieces of pebbles to put in once I lay down all of this mortar. And I'm hoping for the best because this is sort of a small area for this large trowel and we don't have anything smaller. If we do, it's buried somewhere with tools that we haven't touched in quite a while. So yeah, again, as always, hoping for the best. We'll see how it turns out, but I think we'll be okay. I couldn't even find any of my painting spatulas. So yes, I'm using a shim. What? You gonna help me? <laughs> you gonna help me? You can't come over here. You gonna put your paw print there? Huh? Oh, stinker. A little bit tricky with this thing here. I've laid the last of the pebble stone tiles in there and everything seems to be good. So I'm just adding a little bit of weight. Books are not just good for reading. <laughs> so next step will be to, once it dries, then I can put the grout in and we're going to stick with the dark color grout again because that again will match the color of the shower floor. Not that you'll ever see these side by side, but it'll just keep everything consistent. the tile surface is complete and it's still curing so I'm not going to be doing anything to the top level of it but now I'm going to take on the project of putting in the drawer slides um, similar to what we did here with our computer and printer drawer slides also what we have in the kitchen and the bathroom so my plan is to put three right here and it's not my favorite project because it's so tedious and you have to be very precise with measurements, but I'm just gonna follow the pattern that Ruben did over here. So I think that's gonna help me a lot. As always, we shall see. And even though I'm gonna be using his drawers as a template, I still need to measure each one of these individually because since this house is not perfectly square, measurements can sometimes be off, so.
and it doesn't matter how many times I swear I'm going to remember which unit is the right or left side facing up or down. By the time I need to assemble it, I get it confused. So I've learned to label. That one was right facing up, this is left facing up. Took me long enough to figure out a solution. So I finished the clearing over here as much as I could. I couldn't get too close to the rocks because I don't have the string attached to the weed eater. I have more of a blade, so I couldn't get very, very close to the rocks. It's a catch-22 with the weed eater, but that blade does a very good job and it's able to get those really woody stems of a lot of whatever was growing here. We had a lot of stuff. So this needs to be watered. It needs to get moist again. And I'm going to scatter so some hairy vetch and clover over here try and increase that biomass and nitrogen fixing magic. So these branches we cut down early in the year from this tree here because they were low hanging and they were dead. So it's fire mitigation once again, but these are going to be wood chipped. I just don't know how to turn that wood chip around. So I've put them here. Nothing is gonna grow here. So we should be a-okay until Ruben gets back. Whew, it is already warming up. So over here, I cut all this down. We had a lot growing over the course of this year, which is great because it's adding some biomass now that I have cut it down. And then what I'm doing there in that patch is I put some straw over the area and that will sort of help everything to decompose much faster underneath because I'm trying to get that to a nice healthy soil patch because I'm going to be planting some asparagus there. And asparagus should do well there because it likes to have nightshades uh, be its neighbors. So I'm not gonna be planting any tomatoes because we're going into the winter, but we have uh, some kind of a nightshade vine. You can see the berries. Asparagus is going to be planted here, and that is a perennial, so after a couple of years, it should just keep propagating itself. So, most of you guys are probably wondering like, okay, Ruben's at a fire, it's so busy and crazy, but um, thankfully I am not in the front line. I am basically at camp, basically taking care of all the machines and doing all the repairs that are necessary to keep firefighters safe in their vehicles and on the line. But one thing that I do appreciate, the food. Oh my goodness. This is fried tip with ravioli, uh, potato salad, and green beans, and well, Esau, goodness. And they also have ice cream sundaes. Yes. I can't eat that, <laughs> or else I would get home really, really fat. But yeah, it's great food, treat me good, keep me busy, of course, but I'm happy. Well, at this point, we've lost about a quarter of our corn crop because of the wind, I think. Uh, 
Uh, how these are still standing, I don't know because the wind has been pretty, pretty strong lately, but we'll take whatever harvest we can get from this corn. Now here I have the Ford Hook zucchini, which we planted last year and we got a really good harvest last year. This year it did okay, I think because we had those triple digits all through July, it was just too hot for it to create a ton of fruit. But now it's producing a lot and Ruben's not here. And I'm really sick of zucchini at this point. <laughs> See, that one just popped up out of nowhere. I harvested yesterday, I promise. And also hiding here in the zucchini. So we've got pumpkin growing over there, but the vines are coming this way. And we have a really good size Jaradale pumpkin right here hiding under the zucchini leaves. Here we go. That's one good one. And then we have another one somewhere else. And over here we had our winter luxury pumpkins growing and they did so well in the beginning, but the deer got to them before we put up this netting. And we've got some new ones growing, but I don't think they're gonna ripen in time before the frost. So that might just be a loss for this year's harvest. And the rest of the garden is doing pretty well. We do have our Anasazi beans finally taking off. So I will take again, what we can get. I think those triple digits in July just really did a number on our vegetables, but they are tasting really good at this point. So I'm gonna see how many more we get and then let them dry. That way we can save them for actually making um, beans like you would pinto beans. But the green chili is doing great. I'm letting them get a little bit bigger. The big gems are doing awesome. The lumbras are doing awesome. The tomatoes are doing great. Potatoes are not ready to harvest yet. I think we still have a few more weeks, but we have this right here, which is a volunteer tomato plant. Don't know where it came from. It is not one of the Napoli's that I had planted, but we'll take that as well. So we have a little bit more cucumber to harvest. The cilantro and parsley are doing well, but I have also planted some more fall into winter transition type crops like cabbage and some lettuces again. So hopefully we get a little bit more of a harvest before winter really gets here. So I did a little bit more this week than just watch clover grow in our pasture. <laughs> but I am excited to see the clover actually growing along with the other grasses that we did plant. And I know clover is not a popular thing in more urban settings or suburban settings. I think most people don't like to see that clover in their lawn, but clover is actually a very beneficial uh, plant to grow, especially in a setting like this where we want to make sure that our soil is alive and not just ornamental. It's actually going to serve a purpose. We're trying to regenerate this as best we can with the limited resources that we have. So planting legumes is key and having a diverse amount of grasses that will help to benefit the nitrogen fixing and all of the, uh, the elements and, and minerals that we need from the soil to be drawn up to the surface so our topsoil becomes healthy. So it's a few years that this process will take, but we're, we're trying to get there. And the final key component will be that manure that we need from whatever livestock we have here. Now, we're not trying to become a big ranch. It's just going to be homestead level. So we need that manure from those animals, whether it be goats, whether it be chickens, whether it be cows, whatever. So we're getting there little by little. That is why we're spending so much time trying to plant clover and get our field ready to go. We're trying to do this without the big ag chemicals. We want to do this the right way. Anyway, that's what's been keeping me busy. Ruben is doing great at fire camp. We're hoping that he will be here in the next few days. So hopefully next weekend, the video will include more of him working his tail off here but he deserves a rest too. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you're new here, thank you for sticking around. Uh, consider giving us a like and consider subscribing and we'll see you all next week. Spider waiting to catch me outside.